Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be working on a really tiny scroll form and I had an idea the other day that I could probably make it out of a piece of pipe so that's what I'm going to show you today. To get started I'm going to cut away the strip of metal that I'm going to need to make the scroll form but I'm going to leave one side of it attached to the pipe so when I'm done it'll be a scroll form sitting on top of the pipe and because it's a square pipe I'm going to be able to mount it in my vise and uh, use it in four different directions if I need to. You can do this any way you want of course but I have a tendency to drive myself nuts with you know not being able to throw away little chunks of metal like this. So this is some of the things that I come up with to try to preserve my sanity for however long that's going to last. I've mentioned several times in the past that steel responds the same way to the shaping, whether it's hot or cold. And by that I mean that the thin areas are going to bend easier than the thicker areas. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a wedge shape that's going to be thin on the tip and then progressively getting thicker as I go back. And to do that, here I'm cross peening to move the metal sideways because I want the very end of the scroll form to be higher than the rest of the form. That's going to allow me to start the very tip of the scroll while the bar is straight and then wrap it around as I go. So in other words, instead of drawing the bar out lengthwise as you go, you know, hammering out more and more towards the tip to create a wedge-shaped cross-section, here I'm cross-peening more at the tip of the uh, scroll form and cross-peening less and less as I go back. This gives me the very wide section at the tip that I want because I want that to ride above the rest of the scroll form and it just naturally tapers back to the original bar stock. Here you can see that I've cooled the very end of the scroll form and that's to make sure that it doesn't get deformed by the hammering. At the moment the wedge shape is fanning out fairly evenly on both sides of the center line of the scroll form, but I want to push that all the way over so that the bottom edge of the scroll form is flat and the top edge of the scroll form tapers up towards the tip. Once I have the overall shape the way I want, I'm going to use a file to profile the outside edge of the scroll form and I'm also going to go over the surface a little bit to make sure that I don't have any irregularities that are going to give me problems later on. I'm going to start the scroll by hammering it over a very thin radius edge. Uh, this is a tool I made some time ago and I made it specifically for hammering out hinge barrels. It's just the end of a leaf spring, the thicker end and the thinner end are ground to two different radiuses and I've welded a handle onto it just so that first of all I can hang it up and secondly it lets me know that this is actually a tool and not a scrap piece of metal that can be used for something else. And if you have a bad habit like I do of just throwing stuff on a bench until I can get around to cleaning it up, you know how easily these things can get mixed up. I'm going to start shaping the very end of the scroll while it's cold. It's 
the end of course is very thin so it's easy to shape I don't really need any heat to be able to get the shape that I want I'll try to do as much of this as I can cold but there are areas where I'm going to need to heat it up so it's going to be back and forth you know whatever I feel I need to do to get the shape the way I want the one thing you want to make sure is that you don't over bend it because getting it back in such a tight working area is uh, sometimes can be a bit challenging while I'm hammering it cold, if I get the feeling that it's not really responding that well, then all I need to do is throw it back in the fire and heat it back up, and then that will soften the metal again so you keep going. But as I'm working this, you'll see that that tapered cross section that I uh, forged in at the beginning just naturally wants to curve into a scroll shape because it's thinner at one end and you have a gradual taper going back to the full thickness. So I'm going to take advantage of that to uh, make this scroll. Here I'm continuing the shaping with a pair of channel lock pliers. The uh, thin bits on these pliers allow me to get into areas that I can't access anymore with a hammer. And the long handles give me the leverage that I need to apply the pressure to continue the shaping. Here I need to tighten up the very start of the scroll, which is now buried inside the scroll, so I don't really have an easy way to get to it. But if I take a tapered punch, I can fill the gap between the you know inner loop and the outer loop of the scroll, and then I'll back the whole thing up with a hammer so it doesn't really go anywhere, and tap the uh, outside edge of the scroll, and that'll effectively move the uh, inner scroll into a tighter bend without distorting everything else.
Here I'm going to be using a short length of bar to support the outside edge of the scroll so I can start wrapping it around without unwinding the very tip of the scroll. Once the scroll form sucks the heat out of the tip, it'll hold its shape well enough so that I can continue bending the scroll. So this is the finished scroll form and I'm actually quite pleased with how it turned out. Uh, tiny scrolls like this can be a real challenge to make, especially if they all have to be identical if they're you know in a design that's where they're close together you know everybody likes the idea of being able to freehand scrolls but the reality is uh, if you need a lot of them and they have to be the same you need to have a scroll form so if you need tiny ones then you need a tiny scroll form and this is one way to make it we'll see you next time Hi, I'm Dennis, and thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can contact me by using the email address that I have shown here. If you like the channel and the work that I'm doing, please consider becoming a patron. Every dollar you contribute will bring me one step closer to being able to produce videos full-time.